Proud to have Sheriff DeWitt uh, joining us on the phones now. Uh, election coming up this year. He has an opponent in Berkeley County. And uh, I, I'm, I'm so thankful to have you here. We're going to talk about crime and what's going on. And Wayne, good morning. Good morning to you, Brian. How are you? I'm doing great. So uh, I, I had Brian Adams on, who's running against you. Seemed like a nice man. Uh, didn't really. Some of my uh, political opponents talk about what the other guy's doing wrong. So I appreciated he didn't do that. And uh, so I, I want to just dive into Berkeley County. You're you're the man in the chair, and and we've had some things going on around the Low Country within your jurisdiction and outside. And I want to let the folks know what what the what the status is and and what's being done about it. How would you say? crime and and activity of such is is in berkeley county is it getting better or are we seeing more problems as the population explodes um well let me begin by telling you this um first of all brian and um some of the listeners may not be aware of the fact that um, berkeley county uh is the 30th fastest growing county in the country Mm -hmm. and, and the fastest growing in the state of south carolina so we are having a population boom to a certain extent but um you know a lot of people say more people more crime actually our statistics showed that in 2013 uh and especially in violent crimes it had dropped some somewhat from 2012 but uh, i'm sure as the population increases and if the economy doesn't make a big swing upwards then you know we're probably gonna have some more problems if we fight it and use all resources that we have if we have a good working relationship with all the local chiefs and the um, Sheriff Cannon, Sheriff Knight, mm-hmm. and uh, if we have to tap into their resources to help us, we'll do that as well. Let me ask you this. With the economic crisis that we've had over the last five or six years, you could argue it's ended now, but there was a point in time where it was dismal for people. Absolutely. Do, do you- and unemployment r- rate was very high. Um, we saw larcenies skyrocket, uh, especially with the copper thefts. Um, mm-hmm. air conditioning units, that sort of thing, uh, even the catalytic converters on the car, <laughs> under the, underneath the cars, they were t- taking to these scrap yards and selling them to get money. It, it, it was, it was doing almost, anything to, to, to get money. It, it was almost survival to get food to just ba- meet basic needs, and people just – it got to the level of mild anarchy in some cases, I think. And I in the real estate business, we had to be really careful about an air conditioner. They'd come strip all the copper out of that and, and run off with it, and they'd do a whole street sometimes. And – and, and, and are you seeing that side of things get a lot better now throughout the area? Is that is that starting to not be so much the case anymore? Uh, it has. Yes, it has. It's, it's dropped somewhat, uh, not to the level we'd like to have it. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we've not seen an increase in the last year. I mean, it's kind of leveled off and maybe not as bad as what it was in two, 2012, 2011. Now, the Post and Courier had a report yesterday about heroin, and we've seen a lot of meth labs both in, in your county and Dorchester and Charleston County that have been busted up. And are, are we seeing, as the city, as the, the area gets larger, are we seeing more big city drugs make their way into our market because it's more attractive financially? Uh, yes or no? And what, what are we doing to deal with, with, with those awful worst drugs that are out there? Yeah, I think we're we're seeing an upswing with the problem with heroin, um, and from what I've learned from DEA officials and other drug enforcement units, that uh, a lot of it, a great amount of it, is actually coming from out of Mexico. And of course, uh, you fully aware, as the listeners are, that we have a um, fairly large um, and growing Hispanic population in our area mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we've heard of the, um, and I think it's termed black tar heroin. Um, that has come into um, our area. Um, I know we had the problem in Hanahan. We worked with them uh, in North Charleston because they border. Hanahan borders North Charleston right there, Remount Road. And actually, um, I think it's been about maybe three, four years ago, we, we busted a, a large group of Hispanics that were um, bringing the black tar heroin into our county and to Charleston and actually seized a house in Hanahan and be able to sell that house and put it back into drug enforcement. That's great. I applaud you for that. Now, the listeners listen to this stuff and they go, well, there's nothing I can do, and I, I think there is. What can the listener, the honorable citizen of the Low Country, do to help you as Sheriff DeWitt in Berkeley County fight crime and make the community safer? Don't, don't hesitate to call. We have an anonymous tip line, and, and it, we, we, it does not fall on deaf ears, Brian. We listen to that. And if it's valid information, we, we follow up with it as best we can with the resources we have. Um, 
anybody calls and says, I do not want my name revealed, I want to be anonymous, we don't have a problem with that. Give us some valid information, and we'll follow up with it. I'm sure you've been following this thing over at Newington Elementary, which is outside of your jurisdiction in, in Dorchester County, where a parent saw or a volunteer at a school saw a gun in a purse on the premises of Newington Elementary. There was a gap in time, and that gun then ended up in the book bag of that parent's uh, child in, in the classroom. Fortunately, no one was injured. Gun didn't fire. Teacher found it. But it appears to me that that volunteer or that person who saw that was afraid. They've been anom- anonymous in their talk to Live 5 News. Why do you think people are afraid to come to law enforcement and say, hey, I, I saw this, and I think you ought to investigate? Why do, why do more folks not do that? Uh, uh, Brian, my, my take on that would be they just afraid of any type of repercussion because you see someone with a weapon, and, um, I mean, automatically first thing that's going to hit your mind is probably a violent person, and Lord knows what they'll do if I report what I see. So some people are just reluctant. On the other hand, mm-hmm. you know, we have, a, we have a lot of people out there that don't hesitate to make the report. So, um, and, and we see that more and more. And when I have the opportunity to speak to civic groups and crime watch groups, you know, I, I stress that to them. I mean, don't hesitate to call. Be involved. Um, we can't do it all, and with the public's assistance, makes the job a whole lot easier. I got a final question for you, and this may be one of the most uh, close to my heart because I watched this go on, and, and I almost shed a tear when I see um, somebody get killed. And this is mostly in the east side or North Charleston, but I think it's a fitting conversation for any part of our low country. They uh, somebody sees it happen, or they know about it, and they know who did it, and most of the time, it seems at least if you look at the media, the person stays quiet. They don't come forward. We had two or three people shot the week of New Year's in North Charleston. Right. And um, the the problem is, is right around that, you see somebody else who did come forward and they get shot, manged up or killed because they got to get rid of the witness. And I, would it have, this seems to be the problem with getting some of these criminals off the street is having witnesses willing to say, I saw or I know or I heard because they're afraid of their own life. Would it help you to have a profound witness protection program in our state and community? Uh, yes, it would. And, you know, on, on the federal level, they do have that. They have a witness protective program. I mean, if we had uh, the funding for that, yeah, that, yeah that, great idea. I think that's excellent. What? And, uh, once they have the feeling of security, uh, then they'll probably come forward with the information that they have. What can the listener listening to this right now, or me, what can we do to help you and the other sheriffs in the low country get a, a bill up to the state or wherever it needs to go to get witness protection so these people will come out of the shadows and say, I saw that crime? Um, you know, I can work on that myself. I'm sure I can get Sheriff Cannon on board and Sheriff Knight over in Dorchester. Um, actually, last night at our county council meeting, uh, of course, we received our National Accreditation Award, but um, a gentleman from the South Carolina House of Representatives from the upstate, Representative Eddie Talon, uh, chairs the uh, Justice and Public Safety Committee um, um, in, in the General Assembly, and um, he would be a good resource. And I know him very well. He's a retired SLED agent. Mm-hmm. He has a consulting firm now, and I wouldn't be hesitant at all to approach him about and, that and, and give, see if we can get something kicked off. Give me his name again. Eddie Talon, T-A-L-L-O-N. He's from Spartanburg. And we'll try to get him on the program to talk about that. Joe, final question for Sheriff uh, DeWitt. Yeah, I'll, I'll wrap uh, two of them up in one. Uh, we talked earlier about human trafficking uh, just before we got on uh, the line with you. Um, have we seen any evidence of that in Berkeley County? And then also, I guess because the – question about marijuana is you know taking hold in uh, states across the country and probably in your law enforcement career and i'm sure you probably heard the arguments for and against the legalization or decriminalization um in your experience what's true and what's not true okay as far as the human trafficking we have not seen that at um, at any level in, in our county so far i um i can't recall any cases that we've had uh, brought to our attention uh in reference to the marijuana issue and I'm not hesitant to tell you this. I do it all the time. I did it at the uh, breakfast club meeting we had a couple of weeks ago when my opponent was there. Uh, I am not in favor of legalizing marijuana. Um, I have a son who began with marijuana, ended up doing some hard drugs. And so people don't have to tell me, you know, the harm that drugs do to a family. 
I know firsthand. Mm-hmm. And and um, I just think when you legalize it, it's, it's just good. It's it, it's could get the young people started on that, and and Lord knows where it's going to end up. It, so I, I just I could never favor legalizing marijuana. If I could ask you a follow up question on that, uh, not to be combative, but I want to ask about alcoholism and alcohol. Don't don't you think that is as equal of a gateway drug as well, and a and a bigger problem? Or or what are your what do you see alcohol from your prism in in, in Berkeley County? Yeah, alcohol is a problem too. Um, you know, I, and I look at it from this perspective too. Uh, you know, if if a law is passed that legalizes marijuana for um, medical purposes and um, for health issues, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, we'll enforce the law as as it's written. I'm I'm just, you know, with, from within my heart, I can't say I am a proponent to legalize marijuana. Well, given what the short story you've just shared, I I, I don't know if I'd blame you if I were in your shoes. I mean, that's certainly yeah. there's always. Regardless of what we feel on the issue, there's always a case where either side can be right or wrong on that issue. Sheriff DeWitt, we uh, wish you well in the re-election this year, and we hope to have you back to discuss the issues in Berkeley County. Thank you for joining us. Sounds great. I appreciate the invitation and look forward to talking to you later on. You have a great day.